If you're any kind of fan of the Castlevania series, then you have a faint inkling that over the course of the franchise that the timeline has gotten a bit, uh, shall we say, wonky. Like with many game series that span 20 plus some odd titles over 30 years that are all attempting to cobble together a coherent and progressing timeline, there are bumps along the way that muddy the waters. When games change studios and teams over the years, the story can get damn near nonsensical because only the most basic components of the series need to be kept consistent. For Castlevania, all you need is a Belmont, a Whip, and Count Dracula. The rest is up to you. When Koji Igarashi took over as a lead on the series and came in to declare, Thou shalt have a coherent timeline, he took on quite a task. He had to take everything that came before him and try to tie it up into a neat little continuity to help fuel his new vision for the franchise and its lore. Any game that either didn't make sense in the timeline or interfered with his plans for the series got ousted from the series' canon timeline. Circle of the Moon was easy, as it had no Belmont nor Vampire Killer Whip by name, and thus could be neatly swept aside and into its own universe. Legends messed with the idea of the Belmont clan being started by a woman, which did a whammy on Igarashi's plans for the family, and also threw in a sudden romance with Iga's main boy, Alucard, and attempted to capitalize on the sudden popularity of Symphony of the Night, so it was also kicked out of the canon. That leaves Castlevania 64 and its prequel, Legacy of Darkness. Like Circle of the Moon, the two Nintendo 64 games were developed by CKEC, or Konami Computer Entertainment Kobe, a subsidiary of Konami. Like Circle of the Moon, they were booted from Igarashi's canon timeline, though it was never clear why. Eventually, all three games were reinstated when Portrait of Ruin was released years later. Uh, sorta. The Nintendo DS games came with a pre-order bonus, including a printed timeline of the series to that point, and it included both N64 games and Circle of the Moon, though it was never really clarified how canon any of them were. Legends wasn't included in on this timeline, so it wasn't an empty gesture to include the Seekek trio, despite none of them having any descriptions like the other games included on the bonus's timeline. So, these games exist in a state of semi-canon, where they aren't referenced in any future titles in the series, but they aren't contradicted either. But could any of these games still exist within the current full canon timeline? Let's first look at where these games fall in the timeline. According to the Portrait of Ruin bonus timeline, all three games exist within roughly the first half of the 19th century, the only game within Igarashi's canon that exists in the time frame as well is Order of Ecclesia. Ecclesia does not happen in a set year within the in-game lore. All that is stated is that the eponymous Order of Ecclesia was founded in the 19th century to fight against Dracula after the Belmonts went quiet following the events of Symphony of the Night. Based on the backstory of the game as well as dialogue from the characters, the Order has been around for at least a decade or two, as Barlow raised Shinoa and Albus within the Order and trained them since childhood. If the Order was created shortly after the Belmont family's disappearance, then the game could easily take place in the early 19th century. According to the portrait timeline, Circle of the Moon takes place around 1830. So, there might be a conflict between these two games, though Ecclesia mentions that several groups were trying to figure out ways to fight Dracula should he rise, and Morris Baldwin could have been a part of one of these separate groups, attempting to recreate the Belmont fighting styles with whips. Legacy of Darkness takes place around 1844, so if Ecclesia as an organization dissolved prior to then, it leaves an opening for the N64 games to be able to exist. Now let's look at the other, currently canon in-game lore that might eliminate any of these games from being feasible within the timeline. In Circle of the Moon, there is mention of Morris Baldwin and Nathan's parents fighting and sealing Dracula ten years prior that poses a problem, as it would mean an event had to have happened in 1820 to make their lore feasible. This doesn't contradict Ecclesia directly, but it does suggest multiple Dracula resurrections within a few decades, those being 1797, 1820, and 1830. This isn't uncommon in the Castlevania series, 
but it does shoehorn Circle of the Moon into a potential paradox with Ecclesia, if Circle takes up the same stretch of time or even came before it. Thus, Circle of the Moon has issues that make its canon status the murkiest of the three. In the case of Castlevania 64, we have Reinhard Schneider using the Holy Whip of his ancestors, which likely means the Vampire Killer Whip. This throws a wrench into things, as Igarashi's new lore in Portrait of Ruin states the Morris clan had taken over stewardship of the whip at some point before Quincy's lifetime, and that it needed a Lacard to unlock its full power for the indirect Belmont descendant. However, Reinhardt also uses a sword actively in combat, as well as subweapons. Given his story takes place in 1852, this would leave a few decades of time between Reinhardt's quest and John Morris's eventual acquisition of the Vampire Killer Whip prior to the events of Castlevania Bloodlines. What if the Schneider clan were the original keepers of the Vampire Killer Whip prior to the Morris clan, as the Morrises had at some point moved to America and had shied away from vampire hunting? Reinhardt, as heir to the Whip, could have had a Lacard ancestor unlock its power prior to the events of Castlevania 64, or Reinhardt simply could have used the whip as is in its depowered state and relied more on his secondary weapons to fight. Or maybe he just does use a different Belmont heirloom whip altogether. These are not impossible scenarios, and if Reinhardt produced no heirs himself or died an early death, Perhaps it made the most sense to pass the Vampire Killer on to the next line of Belmont cousins, the Morrises. This could work as a story point while keeping in line with the current canon lore. Legacy of Darkness, set eight years prior, could have simply happened after the events of either Order of Ecclesia or Circle of the Moon, with no organization to stop another attempt at a resurrection of Dracula through the use of a man-beast's power. All of this takes varying degrees of belief in filling in the gaps left between the games and the series. In this case, the gaps left between Symphony of the Night to Order of Ecclesia, and from Ecclesia to Bloodlines, in terms of the timeline. There's a lot of wiggle room to be had. If Circle of the Moon happened shortly before or after Ecclesia, and Legacy of Darkness and Castlevania IV happens after both of them, all three games could work within the current canon timeline. There is one small mention by Igarashi in a 1997 developer interview where he states that after Symphony of the Night, the whip went from Richter to the Morris family, but this was also before any future titles in the series were released. Reinhardt could easily have been the one to hand the vampire killer whip to the Morris clan sometime after his fight with Dracula, for one reason or another to allow for plenty of time for John Morris to come into possession of it in his lifetime. Cornell's inclusion in Castlevania Judgment lends some credibility to his character and the backstory still being some part of the series canon at least. Let me know in the comments if I'm missing anything. This is all to say that I believe at least the two Nintendo 64 games should be considered officially part of the series timeline, as Circle would need some plot tweaking. It opens up a bit more room for history within the games and future title potential with remakes. Ever since I saw an incredibly well done tribute to Castlevania 64 on ArtStation by artist Max Berthelot in the style of Dark Souls, I fell 100% behind making some noise to drive interest for an official Castlevania 64 remake done like a From Software title. Basically an expansion on the designs of Castle Kanehurst from Bloodborne and tweaked to be laid out like Castlevania 64 and Legacy of Darkness. Hell, maybe build on those games to bring Sonya Belmont back into the timeline through some tidying up of her backstory while we're at it. Bring all the factions of the fan community together on this. Thanks for watching and hit the subscribe button for more Castlevania games and lore nonsense.